Hi, I'm Sarah McDonald. Welcome to another special on location episode of Issues in Faith. I'm standing in front of the new Hope Haven Adult Day Healthcare Center in Marrero. And if it looks like an old church, you'd be right. The center is located in the historic St. John Bosco Chapel, newly renovated right here on Barataria Boulevard. TheDailyMass.com. Experience the Roman Catholic Mass from historic St. Louis Cathedral every day on TheDailyMass.com. His love anywhere in the world. We're here inside the newly renovated Hope Haven Adult Day Healthcare Center, and I'm joined today by the director of PACE, Greater New Orleans, Stephanie Smith. Thank you so much for hey, being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, and Stephanie, as, as our viewers can see, we have some of our clients here at Hope Haven already enjoying their day. Um, this has been a long time coming, getting this yes, facility absolutely. open. Tell me about this process. Sure. Uh, we started this pro process seven years ago. Um, we were very fortunate to have some grant funding to begin the development of the architectural plans and the layout of the building, the design. We worked with Blitch Knevel Architects, who also did our center in the Bywater, uh, to develop this plan for adult day health care here at the Hope Haven campus. Right, and as, um, as you mentioned, we're at the Hope Haven campus. Right. Um, this used to be St. John Bosco Chapel. Yes. There's a yes. lot of history for so many people right. here on the West Bank. And, and you alluded to it, this is the second um, historic church we've That's been right. able to renovate for um, first Pace uh, right. in the Bywater and now here on the West Bank. So tell us a little bit about um, Pace here over in the Bywater at St. Cecilia. Sure. We opened in September of 2007. Uh, originally scheduled to open in 05, but Katrina hit, so that didn't occur. Uh, we had to rehire all of the staff, restructure everything. But we were so fortunate that we had the support of the archdiocese and Catholic charities, and we were able to reopen that center. So we have currently 172 participants enrolled in that program. Uh, PAY stands for Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly. Mm -hmm. So what that means, it is a comprehensive health care model that coordinates all of the care needed for participants so that they can stay in their homes as long as possible instead of having to go into a nursing home. That's right. And this is not a PACE center not quite yet. yet. We <laughs> hope it will be. We hope it will be soon. We've applied to the state to expand um, to the West Bank to have PACE participants here. So we're hopeful mm -hmm. that will happen soon. And PACE and, and Hope Haven and Greenwald are all part of, of Catholic Charities Network. Tell That's us a right. little bit about that. That's correct. Um, we try to have a full continuum of senior services available within various communities. So we have the Greenwald Adult Day Healthcare Center. That's uh, 1803 Myro Street. That's in Kenner. Mm -hmm. We also have this center that's recently opened, and we have our PACE Center in the Bywater 4201 North Rampart Street. So with that, when you call in and need services, we can determine what's the best available fit for you. And a lot of that has to do with, with where you live that's right. and what your needs are. That's right, exactly. Yeah. So what does it mean to be able to see these historic churches, um, many of which were people were very sad when, when they actually right. closed. Right. Um, what does it mean to be able to see these historic churches reopened and, and have elderly participants come in for the day? Oh, it's just, it's exciting to see them come in here, make their day. Their families are so appreciative because there's so limited services for seniors mm -hmm. in these various areas. We are hopeful that more will come, that we'll be able to expand our services throughout the community, but it's just meant the world to the families here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wonderful to be able to do it in a sacred space like yeah. this. Um, our church space, uh, St. Cecilia was the first one, and it gives such a homey, warm environment. It's very inviting. People want to come here. Uh, they feel loved. They feel cared for. And it just really has a nice feeling to it. And we hear, um, as we're talking, the church bells in the background. Yes, They're yes. not actual bells. They are recording. That's Tell true. us a little bit about that. <laughs> that was a donation for, from our past board chairman, John Hummel. Uh, and his family. They're involved in recreating bell sounds. Mm -hmm. And so that was the actual recording of the Big Ben 
chimes. Oh, wow. Yes, and every 30 minutes it chimes, and it's on a clock system. But it really does give you that warm feeling. You can hear it outside mm -hmm. in the community, and you realize, yes, we are in a wonderful space. And it's so, um, there they are again. <laughs> it's so nice, I think, too, not only for the residents, but for the community here on mm -hmm. the West Bank. This, um, we're going to talk about it a little bit when I, when I speak with your board chair later sure. on the show. But this tract of land and everything that has been here for mm -hmm. so long on the West Bank, dating back to the, to the 20s, means so much. And to have those bells ring out on right. Veritaria amidst right. all of the growth that's happened, means so much to the people here. Mm -hmm. What has been the community response? Oh, it's been overwhelming. We've had so many people stop, stop by just mm. to see what's going on. Uh, you would be surprised how many people came to church here, or got married here, or got baptized here, and they just have a connection to this building. And to be able to give back to the community in a different way, maybe not as a church, but as another uh, community benefit to help their families and their loved ones, it just, it really means a lot. And what does it mean for you? Obviously, professionally, you've been involved with PACE for yes. many years yes. now. Um, personally, to be with the families, mm -hmm. to be with the, res the uh, I'm going to say residents, to be with the clients who yes. come in every day, and, and to interact with the community, and, mm -hmm. and now in the Bywater area as well as on the West Bank, and, the, and in Kenner. Right. Well, this has been very transformative for me. I just think that it's had such an impact personally because I have family members who have uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and mm -hmm. so to experience that personally and to feel like oh we can make a difference we can impact these people's lives mm -hmm. we can uh, support the families and and really fill that void that has been missing so that families can work uh, they can support their you know their loved ones in a caring way but yet still have their own individual lives and and just improve their quality of life. So it's been very fulfilling. And that is something that, that speaks to so many, so many families mm -hmm. have elderly loved ones right. that um, don't need to go into a home quite yet, but they mm -hmm. need that assistance during the day. Yes. Um, I know it's touched our family, my family, mm -hmm. it's, as you mentioned, it's touched right. yours. So this is a ministry that really is um, family building and, and, and fulfilling. That's right. We a lot of times during that sandwich generation where you're taking care of children, you're taking care of elderly parents or grandparents mm -hmm. or aunts and uncles, especially in our extended families here in New mm -hmm. Orleans. And so to have that comfort that they're coming somewhere they enjoy, they're getting a good nutritious meal, they're having health care needs met, um, and they're just feeling loved and cared for during the day instead of isolated or alone. Because so mm -hmm. many seniors suffer from depression mm -hmm. because of isolation. and. This really does benefit the whole family unit. And so now we have this beautiful space for them to come <laughs> in. Right. They don't have to feel that isolation. They can feel that warmth and that love that right. the staff provides them and that the company that they yes. have with people their own age. That's absolutely right. Well, Stephanie, I want to thank you so much for oh, your you. commitment you. to, to PACE and getting the doors open here on the West Bank at Hope Haven. And um, you have done a beautiful job oh, with the you. building and getting residents, uh, listen to me, I'm doing it again, clients, <laughs> clients through the doors. So again, thank you for your ministry. Absolutely, thank you. And when we come back, we'll give you that up close look at what makes this historic facility so unique. This is Issues in Faith on WLAE. The heart of Woman's New Life Center is its outreach to women in unplanned pregnancies, especially those who are seeking an abortion. Our professional counseling services, combined with free ultrasound tests, provide each woman with the nurturing she needs while also revealing her unborn child to her. For more information about the life-saving work of Woman's New Life Center, call 504-831-3117 or visit womansnewlife.com. We're back at the Hope Haven Adult Day Healthcare Center, and I'm joined now by Laura Jacobs, the program manager of the facility here. Thank you so much, Laura, for being with us. My pleasure. Well, we did a site scout before coming out here already, and mm -hmm. um, I was blown away uh, in talking to you about the services that are going to be offered here and also um, the historic mm -hmm. nature mixed with some of the new um, things that have come into the old building to make this just really a welcoming place yes. for all of the clients. So I, I want to start by, um, tell me about the services you're going to be offering here, and, and you already are offering here to clients. Yes, indeed. We already have a few participants, and um, at the time we are offering transportation, uh, light snack in the morning when people come in, 
and a snack in the afternoon when they leave and then a hot nutritious lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of activities that we offer from uh, arts and crafts to puzzles to movie time. Um, we also do exercise sessions with our participants, which they very much enjoy. Sure. And um, just basic recreational activities. Now we also are offering um, dispense of, dis dispensation of, of medicines sure. uh, as ordered by a physician. Mm -hmm. And we do have a social worker on staff and an LPN. And we also have RN oversight here. Very good. And so it's really a place where families can can feel comfortable that their loved one is going to be really truly cared for and also interact with others their age and, and, and younger. Absolutely, and we're having a lot of fun with it. And I, I know that our caregivers that come in every day are so thankful and are very effusive with their, their uh, gratitude when they drop their loved ones off because they know they're gonna be well taken care of and they love coming in in the morning. So we're really happy about that. So who is eligible to, to be a client here, to, to come in during the day? Okay, um, 22 years and older, uh, certified by a physician to be uh, nursing home eligible. Okay. But don't really, these are, this is for people that don't need 24 hour a day assistance and for families and caregivers and their loved ones to keep them at home in the community mm -hmm. so that they can go out and work and do what they need to do during the day and like I said be assured that their loved ones are safe. And we know very well from, from studies and, and even me from personal experience how important it is for loved ones to be able to stay at home with family. Absolutely. It's just you know so hard on families when they have to take that step to go mm -hmm. into the nursing home and we're so happy to be able to be here and just let them be at home as long as feasible for the families. Sure. So. And so obviously the, the setting is going to mean a lot to those who come in. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the historic elements that you feel really makes this adult daycare center and adult health care center <laughs> um, really unique? Well, anywhere that we could, we tried to preserve the architectural elements, the stations of the cross, the, um, the stained glass windows. Mm -hmm. uh, we incorporated a lot of the woodwork that was in the confessionals into um, some decorative elements. So we really tried to be very uh, cognizant of what we could save and use in the new design. And I think we were really successful with that because everybody that comes in is just blown away. It is, it's, a, it's absolutely amazing. And, and the expansive nature, mm -hmm. the color, the windows bring in. Yes. Um, it's really, really amazing. But you Thank have you. also incorporated some new with the old. And absolutely. What was that design process like? Well, it was interesting, and we had some professionals come in mm -hmm. to help us that kind of um, their expertise was in elder care and other um, senior centers. Mm -hmm. So they really helped us with choosing the right kind of flooring that is, you know, slip resistant sure. furniture that can be easily moved and clean, but that's stable enough. Um, for example, our tables in our activity center can be raised and lowered to accommodate mm -hmm people that are in wheelchairs. So in selecting the different elements, we did keep in mind our, our population. And we've also added a serving um, kitchen, uh, restrooms, lots of yeah, restrooms, yeah. as there weren't any in here originally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, And that's one thing that, that people might not realize as they're driving by. In these older buildings, you, you face a lot of um, a lot of challenges at yes, times, yes. but it, it's well worth it. In the it end certainly has been. I mean, all of the engineering, you know, to get air conditioning in here, to get the plumbing up to code, but yes, it was definitely all worth it. And I love that you have left some space for some original artwork as yes. well from, yes. from, from your clients. Yes, we, um, we tried to do that. We, we also left space to where we can accommodate artwork that our participants are gonna mm -hmm. put together, so. Very yeah. good. Okay, so those who want to enroll a loved one or family or see and they want to enroll themselves, okay. um, how, what do they do? What do they need to do? Okay, they need to um, come by okay. and pick up some forms. There's only three forms that are necessary. They take those to their doctor and as soon as they bring them back, they can be enrolled that same day. Okay. So the, the, the process is very simple. And costs, what, how, would it, how would that work out for families? Right now we have a $57 per day private pay rate, which um, we can uh, discount a little bit based on how many days they attend. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also 
currently speaking with the VA to be able to get um, VA over here and they would pay for that and also working on Medicaid okay. right now. I know it's, it's a new ministry, we're working, there's a lot in process. Yes. So um, we want to ask the community definitely to get in touch. What's that number that they can call? It's area code 504-267-9692. And for those who are also interested, there's also a 504-835-0006 yes. number, and that would connect you with all of the services exactly. that PACE would offer throughout the entire community. Well, Laura, I want to thank you so much You're for welcome. sitting down with us and, and um, being with us today and for your commitment over the years and getting this ministry open. I know it's going to mean a lot for thank many. Thank you so much, Sarah. Again, for more information, you can call 504-835-0006. And when we come back, we'll talk to a one local West Banker about what it means to see this building open and come back to life. This is Issues in Faith on LAE. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Cox Channel 14, Charter Channel 11 and 711, AT&T Channel 32 and 1032, Dish TV, Direct TV, and over-the-air broadcast on Channel 32. For decades, the beautiful building we are now sitting in was empty here on Barataria Boulevard. Now, as you can see, it's found new life, it's been repurposed, and joining us now to talk about what this means for the West Bank community is Mr. Joe Toomey. Thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Well, as we said, um, this building has been empty, but the entire tract of land that the Hope Haven Center now sits on um, is very important to the West Bank community. Tell us a little bit about that and that its history. Well, this, this whole campus goes back to 1921 with uh, Monsignor Weinhoven. Mm -hmm. Uh, who developed this uh, as a place for boys to uh, learn and uh, be nurtured. Uh, but all of these Spanish architecture buildings uh, go back to the 1920s. Um, they're really a landmark on the West Bank and uh, really an integral part of our, our culture and community. Uh, they're so identifiable. And it's uh, just most fortunate now that we were able to, to renovate this building, this beautiful architecturally sound building uh, for a good purpose uh, to utilize it on the West Bank. And you have some, some personal connections to this building as well. Yeah, I know as, as a graduate of Archbishop Shaw High School, we used to come here every week for mass mm -hmm. and we had our ring ceremony and other ceremonies like that. So there's a lot of people like myself that have a long history of involvement with this particular facility when it was used as the uh, chapel. And, you know, as I said, this has been reopened, maintaining a lot of the historic details. What do you think it's going to mean for the community to, to see this building back in action, so to speak? Well, you know, over the past couple of years, we've, uh, we've cleaned up and spruced up the exterior. And I think people have seen that and identified with it. Uh, but we're trying to get people now to look at the inside here. The, the beautiful uh, building that we have now, uh, highlighting all the architectural detail. Um, so we're hoping uh, over the next months or so, to get more and more people in here just to see it and to appreciate the program that we have here in place. And you mentioned as we were sitting and preparing for, for taping, um, your wife has been so involved and when she walked in, she barely recognized the yeah, entire it's, building. I mean, it's, it's amazing from, uh, from being a chapel to what it is now. Um, uh, those of us that are familiar with it are probably more impressed than anyone else, the, uh, the transformation of this building. And so we're talking a lot about the building, but the services we're going to provide here are going to be really vital to the community. How do you think the community is going to respond to having this new adult daycare center here? Uh, we, we expect that the reception is going to be overwhelming. Um, for one thing, the, the, the historic buildings, but they're so centrally located on the West Bank. And we think that the programs will be uh, much needed. Um, uh, it's it just a, a, a great facility to have here on the West Bank. And uh, we're very encouraged by the early response. And you've been involved in this for a very long time. First as chairman, you mentioned, as the, of the West Bank Advisory Board, and now as the PACE um, chair. What have you been seeing in your years and in terms of family response, client response, to the ministry that actually takes place in these buildings? Well, the, the, the PACE ministry is one that uh, we're so proud of and that it's so well recepted in the community. And we hope that one day um, this facility will be a full-fledged PACE program as well. 
But in, in the meantime, as an adult daycare facility, we think there'll be a lot of interest, um, a great place for seniors to uh, spend time um, in, in a great environment. Uh, so we think it's a good opportunity now, and we think the future is bright for this facility as well. Sure, and, and we were talking as well as about some of the hopes and dreams for the future and expansion and some of the other buildings. Tell us a little bit about what, what you would like to see. Well, you mentioned the West Bank Advisory Committee, and it's a support group that we have um, to, to that nurture this facility. And we hope that we'll continue to work with this facility and, and the future expansion of this facility. Uh, we have uh, space and buildings, uh, other architecturally uh, historic buildings that we can move into and expand to. So there's a lot of opportunity here, uh, and hopefully demand will, uh, will meet that opportunity. Well, and you mentioned as well, um, as we were talking in preparation for the interview, some of the things the West Bank Advisory Committee has done, the Pew to Do's, which we've covered here on Issues in Faith. Um, talk a little bit about those and how else the community can get involved? Well, I think the Pewtodos, we had two of those, which were fundraisers in support of this facility, uh, demonstrated the community support um, um, for such a facility. And, and these were just, you know, people that had an interest in, uh, in, in rehabbing these mm -hmm. buildings, in providing services for senior citizens. Um, and we think that now that it's open and operation, um, we should go on to even more support and the future looks even brighter. Uh, but that support group has been, been very good, uh, been instrumental in getting the word out as to what we're doing and getting the word out as to the needs that we have yeah. to support this institution. And so people who <coughs> want to get involved um, in the community on the West Bank, and, and we're talking the entire West Bank, Plaquemines Parish, um, Algiers Point, Marrero, Gretna areas, how can people get involved? Well, I, I think there's a there's a couple of ways, just one in a volunteer role with the, with the adult programs that we have. Uh, another is participating in our advisory committee, which is the support group. And, and at the very least, um, supporting the uh, activities that we have um, around this center and in support of this center. Sure, and so we're, we're running out of time, but um, I want you to talk, we, we mentioned a little bit as we started talking, you having a history. What does it mean to you personally? to be able to walk through these doors and, and see this, this ministry really come to life to benefit so many in the community. Well, it, it's so exciting. Uh, my, my wife and I and many others go back over 30 years in working with the programs here at Hope Heyman, uh, which are you know, we're, we're for young people. And now we have a program here for, for older people. Um, the, the transition has been wonderful. Bringing life back to this uh, campus has been wonderful. Um, and we think the opportunities uh, are really bright for the future here. Very good. Well, Mr. Toomey, I want to thank you so much for your commitment for so many years to the ministries here on the West Bank, but, um, but also for being with us today. Uh, it's been my pleasure. Thanks thank you so for much. joining us. <laughs> and we'll be right back. WRBH 88.3 FM provides blind and print handicapped listeners with programs that inform and entertain. To learn more, Contact 504-899-1144 or wrbh.org. As we close tonight's show, we want to invite the community to join Archbishop Amen and the staff at Hope Haven for a blessing and dedication on October 21st at 1 p.m. And don't forget, you can join the conversation by writing us at issuesinfaith at wlae.com or finding us on Facebook. That's all for tonight's show. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, God bless.